But better late than never. Welcome. It's Let's go, baby. Fucking Anton Lander. Thank you. Bag milk. Yeah, huh? This is Ceases. Hello. Ceases. Hello. Ceases. Hello, Ceases. What comes next? Ceases. Then what? We learned something. Tyler, your rem check ah. is so fucking sexy. Yes, he is. And that's where we're going to bring Jesus. it down. We're going to turn this down and we're just going to get the show started. Check it out. Better late than never episode. Blah, blah, blah. I think 44. Doesn't matter what it is, but I'm happy to be here today. Happy to have a new podcast. Happy to talk about a bunch of Oilers. The boys are back in town, baby. A lot of stuff going on that I want to get to this week. But first, I got to tell you about my friends at the audio department. Of course, check them out at theaudiodepartment.ca. They do provide you with a safe space for creativity and collaboration for artists and musicians to realize their potential and share their message through sound and story. Theaudiodepartment.ca. Book a little studio time. I was talking to Wanye the other day, and we were just saying, hey, what if for the third round of Wanye does better late than never that we go to the audio department? Wanye knows the folks at the audio department. We record there. That could be fun. Play around with some instruments. It'd be great. The audio department.ca. Check it out. That is located at 6916 82nd Avenue Northwest right here in Edmonton. Welcome to the show. Welcome to better late than never. One thing I want to mention off the jump, no reviews this week. No new reviews this week, so if you could please leave me some reviews, I'd love to read those. You can say whatever you want. I'll read a Baron Burgundy style. I don't mind. I know what this bit is. I know what this shtick is. And if you want me to just, you know, I'll plug your whatever, your Twitter handle, just toss in the review. I'll read that. Whatever you want. Just help me pump up the numbers on Apple Podcasts, which leads me to a poll I did on Twitter and Instagram yesterday, I believe. And uh, I just asked you guys, do you want me to do two episodes of this podcast as we start the NHL season. Like maybe in October, I could start doing two a week instead of just the one. You know, there's gonna be lots to talk about. I've got more segment ideas that I wanna do. And instead of just making this podcast from usual 45 minutes to an hour, instead of turning it into like a 90 minute thing, maybe it's just two 45 minute podcasts in a week. Hundreds of votes came in and overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly, you said do two episodes per week. So I'm gonna be looking at doing that. The audio department, they only paid for one. They're going to be happy about it. And I think that is important because they make me very, very happy. Just like the Boundary Battle of Alberta event did this past weekend. And that's where I'm going to start the podcast is I got to give some love. I got to give some love to my boy Waz and Kennedy and Kylie for heading out to Lloyd Minster and covering the event. So I want to take you behind the scenes a little bit. I want to take you behind the curtain, if you will, about how we are planning things out. Nation Dan from HockeyFights.com, he found the uh, the Boundary Battle of Alberta out in Lloyd, and he shared it in our content meeting the other day. And he's like, this is going on. There's going to be a bunch of former and current Oilers there. There's going to be a bunch of former Flames there. They're just raising a little bit of money for charity. Here it is. If anybody's interested in going, I've got the contacts. I'll set it all up. No problem. So I say to Nation Dan, that's a great idea. Anybody interested? Was Kylie Kennedy. They're all like, we're in. So they went out. They were planning to go out to Lloyd on Saturday to cover the event for OilersNation.com. What we learned the night before the event is that the Oilers would have some kind of communications person there that they would have to, you know, have as their liaison or their contact while they were there for scheduling players and interviews and all that stuff. That's the process. You don't just walk up to Alish Hemsky and say, Hey, Alish, what's going on, baby? You got to schedule that. So when I found that out on Friday night, I just went, Oh, shit. Shit. I assumed there was no way that the Oilers were going to let us talk to anybody. I was set on it. <laughs> So when it came time to make a decision on whether or not the crew should still go to Lloyd and cover the event, I said, yeah, we'll go and cover the event and do it nation style. We'll be the fans there. We'll cover it from a fan's perspective. And if we get to talk to anybody, that'd be amazing. But don't expect it. Expect to go there covering it as the nation always does from the seats in the stands with the people. Then when the crew gets there, first thing they find out is they're going to have all access to everybody past and present. So what happened was, was Kylie and Kennedy got to interview 
some amazing people. If you've missed it already, it's Wednesday as I'm recording, September 14th. Check out our YouTube channel, the Nation Network YouTube channel, or OilersNation.com. Waz posted the interviews that he did with Alex Hemsky and Rafi Torres today, and they're fun. They were a lot of fun. And not to mention, Alex Hemsky still looks like he could play. It's been a hot minute since being around, and he looks great. Not only does he look great, but the hair he's rocking these days, which is basically a modified mullet, party up front, or a business up front party in the back, while he's got a whole lot of volume there and a whole lot of party going in the front and back. I say it was an homage to, to Schmitty. Maybe it's just European high fashion that I haven't you know embraced yet. But either way, Alex Hemsky looked great. The interviews with uh, with Hemsky and Torres were fantastic. I want to give Waz some love. We've got more coming as the week goes on. So pay attention to all our social channels. So I just want to give the crew a little bit of love and take you behind the scenes about when we were going out there. We had like an internal, nah, shit. I guess we're just going to be covering it from the stands. We won't get to talk to anybody. But we did. We did. And that made, made make me wonder, like, did that guy, the alumni coordinator guy, did he get in trouble with the Oilers for letting them talk to us? I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud. Maybe he didn't. I hope he didn't because we made some good stuff that covered the event in a positive light and raised some money for charity. So I hope not, but it was weird. It was a, just, it was a surprise. It was a very pleasant surprise for your boy bag milk. And I was pumped about it. I was pumped for the team. I was pumped for us. I was pumped for the content that you guys get to watch as a result. There's lots to be excited about here. Lots to be excited about until we got into my question of the week, changing gears a little bit. I do this question every week. You know, I ask you something. It just pops up in my life. And I want to pose it to you because I'm not the only one that feels this way. So this week, the question was, what do other people like that you just don't understand? What's something that's extremely popular in pop culture and the world at large and you just don't get it? You just look at it and you go, that, that, that's not for me. That's not for me. Like man buns, when those were a thing there, those were a hot thing for a minute. I didn't get it. Word for me, I've got a beautiful head of hair. I could have rocked an amazing man bun, but did I want to? No, I don't. I didn't want to. I didn't understand it. But in this particular example, I said Lord of the Rings. I have tried, I'm going to say, no no exaggeration either. I'm going to say I've tried five, six, seven times to get into Lord of the Rings, at least the first one, and I've fallen asleep within 15 or 20 minutes. I just don't give a shit about wizards and hobbits and orcs and rings and whatever the Gollum character is, like, I, I don't care. I just don't care. And it's so boring to me. And it's one of those ones where the reason this question makes me laugh is because it's one of those ones where so many people love Lord of the Rings and then they've got the continuation on whether it's Prime or HBO. I don't remember who's got what. Oh no, HBO's uh, uh, Game of Thrones. That's another one. I haven't seen anything. I don't like dragons. I don't care about dragons and wizards. I don't care about any of it. I don't care about all of that shit. I don't care about orcs or magic, or any of it. So Game of Thrones, Lord of the Rings, I just, I tried. I mean, Game of Thrones, I haven't seen a second. I haven't even seen the intro. I don't even know what it sounds like. So I haven't tried that. Lord of the Rings, I have tried. I just, to me, if you put on Lord of the Rings and I'm in the room, you're like, bag milk, we're going to get into Lord of the Rings tonight and I'm going to make you watch all nine hours of the movies or whatever it is. I will be sleeping for nine straight hours. Or eight minutes and 45 seconds. So I posed the question on Twitter and as always... All of you came back with just some fantastic answers of things that you don't like that other people do, or you're just wanting to shit on me for not liking Lord of the Rings, which is also fine. Antfly says, I fell in love with Lord of the Rings since the first time I read them when I was 11. What I don't get is how people can listen to all of this auto-tuned garbage that passes as music these days. There are still good bands and artists out there, but they are far and few between, or few and far between, I should say. Um, let me think about that. I like a lot of new music, but that's just always been my thing. Like if there's a new pop jam that's just insanely popular, chances are your boy Bag Milk's going to like it. I like a lot of new hip hop has a lot of auto-tune shit. Shout out to, uh, why can't I think of that guy's name? Oh, it's going to bother me now. It's going to bother me so bad. Auto-tune singer guy. Why can't I think of it? Why can't I? The T-Pain for fuck's sakes. Oh my God. Don't you hate it when your brain glitches like that? I could see the guy's face. I could Think of some songs like his hook on black and yellow. Ah, uh, you know what it is. Like all that shit. I loved it. Shout out to T-Pain. Uh, Stacy says online dating. I'm ecstatic for those who have done it and found success. However, it's just not for me. I'd like to know your relationship status, Stacy. 
Are you currently single? Are you currently in a relationship? Are you married? I'd like to know. You guys just met up out on the streets? That's old school. I would say for that one, online dating, I did not understand at all. At all. I had a longtime partner that I lived with for a while, and we met organically. I like We were at a bar. That's how we met. Uh, it was very old school. I didn't understand online dating. I'd never seen Tinder. I'd never seen any of that. And then when that relationship ended and it was time to move on and get into a new thing, well, all of a sudden I'm in my mid thirties. I don't really want to go to bars anymore unless it's for an Oilers game or some kind of special event where I'll actually feel like putting pants on. So you do it and you get in there and you realize how horrible swiping is. It's not just that online dating is bad. It's just the experience of just flying through people based on nothing but one or two photos is just tragic. And I tend to agree. I tend to agree. But again, how did you meet your significant other? I'd like to know. I'd like an update. Verbrugs. Verbrugs. Am I saying that right? He says hot sauce. Or Verbrugs says hot sauce. It masks all the flavor. I don't buy that. In fact, I'm offended. I'm rereading this again just to make sure. Verbrugs, hot sauce, it masks all the flavor. I, I disagree. I don't buy that at all. I don't buy that at all. C Red says ketchup. <laughs> what? What? Who's not a fan of ketchup? It's just basically sugar paste. It's delicious. Dunk some. What do you put your fries in? What if you you got no access to gravy? What are you doing? What are you dunking fries in? FRZ says college football. I'm not a big college football guy either, to be honest. Um, college football is one of those things where I've got buddies who are super into it, and if it's on TV, I could watch it and enjoy it. But like, I don't understand the obsession with it. However, maybe that would change if I actually got a chance to go to one of those stadiums and participate in the you know the pregame, the tailgating, the songs, the band, all that stuff. I think being at a college football game would be super fun, actually. But I tend to agree I'm not super into it. Steve says fantasy sports and sports gambling. I have zero interest in either and could care less about other people's fantasy teams or their bets. I get it's the new reality with all the money it provides sports leagues, but it's just not for me. I get that. I get that. In fact, I am a sports better and I do a little bit of fantasy, a little bit of DraftKings, but like not a lot. Um, you know, I got BLT bets with Tyler and Zach and I recorded a fresh episode of that today. So I have a betting podcast, but I totally get it. I totally get the people that just look at what's going on with sports betting and just being like, what the fuck is this shit? It's so predatory to me in the sense the commercials, the way they're just in that's all the time, all the time, it's all the time. So I, I get it. I get it. I imagine by 2025, there will be no more TV shows, only gambling commercials. Hank says, big brother. Well, come on. This season's so good. Hank, come on, man. The double eviction. Come on. The new HOH, getting that guy out, the one I wanted out, or else he was going to win, the drama. It's good shit, Hank. I feel like you're missing out. Uh, Cody says, Game of Thrones. Agree with that one. Never seen a second. Mainlander Tim offers my favorite answer so far and just says, other people's kids. <laughs> uh, that one made me laugh. It was my favorite answer of the day. Austin says, mosh pits. Why would you subject yourself to that amount of human contact and violence? I love a mosh pit. I mean, not now. I'm too old now. I'm 37 years old. But when I was younger, like in my prime, let's talk early 2000s, <laughs> like 2000. Uh, when did Blink-182 come with like some, it was Edge Fest 2 and Blink-182 is the headliner. If you listen to this podcast for any length of time, you know, Blink's my favorite band of all time. Went in there as 16-year-olds, 17-year-olds, and that was one of the first times I went in a monster mosh pit like that and did some crowd surfing and all of it. I became hooked from that moment. The last time I went in a mosh pit and crowd surfed was, uh, oh, it was my 30th birthday. Me and three buddies got tickets to Marilyn Manson at the, where was that? Where was that? The, uh, the Shaw Conference Center, whatever that's called now. It was down at the conference center and we decided to get into the pit because we're like, we're, we're old, we're shitty, but let's do it. And man, I had a great time. I like, I'm, I'm not a small guy, but I'm not a big guy either. Like I'm six feet, but I'm, I'm manageable. Like you can still lift me up. Whereas one of my buddies that was there, he's like six, four, just, he's a big dude. He wasn't going up on that. He wasn't crowd surfing, but I love it. 
I love it. The thing that I don't love is when you're done a concert like that and you're drenched with thousands of other people's sweat and spit and blood and whatever else is on you. You just fucking reek. It's gross. Also, from that Marilyn Manson concert, we were in the pit when the glitter cannons went off at the end of the show. So we played Beautiful People or whatever it was and the glitter cannon goes off and we were covered in that fucking glitter, literally finding it in my house for years. It would be like little corners in my laundry room where there was a little dabs of the Marilyn Manson glitter and it was all my buddies too. That had nothing to do with anything. I was just telling the story the last time I was in a mosh pit and I loved it. My niece is 19 and she went to Greta Van Fleet whenever they were here just a couple of weeks ago. And she went in the pit for the first time and she was very overwhelmed. And it was just very funny hearing her end of the story. And I imagine we're going to get more of these in the voicemail. But now we got other stuff to do. We got to take care of the news. The news brought to you by the audio department. They bring you everything. The boys are back in town, and that means that we are starting to pick up. We are starting to inch towards the beginning of the 2022-23 regular season. We are less than a month away from opening day, people. Less than a month away. But there's still plenty left to do in terms of the Oilers' uh, depth chart slash salary cap situation. So let's get right into it. Ryan McLeod, we've talked about him on this podcast for the last couple of weeks. Where are you, Ryan McLeod? Well, Daniel Nugent Bowman at The Athletic had this to say this past week. The expectation from what I've been told is the cap hit on McLeod's second contract will either come close to or will mirror the 975... Close to a million dollars or mere the 750000 of his brother Michael's contract. The elder McLeod signed a two-year pact with the Devils, also a second contract, last July. If I were a betting man, Ryan's salary will probably be a notch or two lower. The new contract could be also be for two years, but it appears a one-year agreement is the more likely outcome. <clears throat> I'm going to just push a button here for Ryan McLeod. Whoops. So what am I doing here? Good Lord. Good Lord, I got too excited. I got too excited about everything going on. So I just want to push this for Ryan McLeod. <laughs> Obviously, we don't know what it's going to take to get Ryan McLeod on the books and under the salary cap. And that's where I get nervous. And that's actually going to lead into the righteous sack beating a little bit. Because again, <sighs> Jake Vertana's name is circling the Edmonton Oilers. Elliot Friedman today said in a radio appearance that he would be surprised if Jake Fortana was not with the Oilers by the time the year starts. Tom Gazzola, local guy I trust, said it's either down to Edmonton or Calgary. I don't get it, man. I don't get it. He's not that good. I don't understand wanting to, willingly wanting to bring in the noise. I get it. I get what the court case said. I get all that. I don't want the noise. I don't want the noise for a player who's not that good. You know, you're going to, I have had some people after last week's podcast go, well, bag milk, you you know, they took the chance on Evander Kane and it worked out great. Yeah, it did. There was baggage. I also said I wouldn't have done that. He came in, he shot the lights out, showed that he's still a 35, 30 to 40 goal guy, which was never in doubt. And he behaved well. So he got himself a new deal. But let's not pretend that Evander Kane isn't going to be under close watch now that he's got this new contract with the Oilers or with the Sharks or whatever the fuck happens with that. Uh, that grievance that's still lingering as the season is right uh, is fast approaching. Uh, the fact that it's still lingering right now, I don't understand how that works. But the situations are not at all the same to me. Jake Furtan is just like, I don't see how he helps. So again, that account that I said, don't pay attention to that one small guy account, the one that started this whole Vertanen thing a few weeks ago, he's now adding to his rumor saying that to clear the space for Vertan and Pugliarvi would go to Edmonton. Edmonton would receive Colorado's second round pick in 2023, which Anaheim had previously acquired. Oh. I'm the guy that says, don't get mad about things until they've happened. But this one, I'm having a real hard time with. This one I'm having a real hard time with because it doesn't make sense to me from a team perspective at all. It's not like Jay Vertan is going to come in here and all of a sudden not be the guy that only scored five goals in his last NHL season. 
it's not like he's going to come in here unless some miracle has happened in his progression over the, by the time he got kicked out of the NHL. But like he scored nine goals in 36 games in the KHL last year. That's not exactly sexy to me. And the noise, I just don't think it's worth it. I don't think he's good enough. I don't think it's worth it. And if the way to clear the space for him is to trade a Yessa Puliarvi for a draft pick, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? It's just annoying. And I'm going to get more to this in the in the righteous sack beating, but like, goodness, goodness gracious, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. And I'm annoyed by it. I just, I don't like it. My dad's calling me right now. Should I bring him on the podcast? Let's see. Oh, he hung up. He hung up. I was going to see, I was going to put him on speakerphone and be like, dad, you're on my podcast. He's probably calling about, uh, I asked him for cooking instructions on a spaghetti squash today. So he's probably calling to see if I figured it out or what I'm going to do with that spaghetti squash. Last time I tried to cook one, my sister gave me one, I think. Uh, I fucked it up. So the concern from his end that I'm able to properly do this and cook an edible meal for myself, well, you know, it makes sense to me. Um, Back to the task at hand. I don't understand the Vertanen thing. I don't understand how he fits, especially if the cost is having to send out Yesa Puliarvi to clear the space to get the cap space and maybe a second round pick. What are we fucking doing? Just so you know, in 69 games, nice. 2019, 2020, that was a career high for Jake Vertanen. 18 goals, 18 assists for 36 points. That's what Yesa Puliarvi had last year, and everybody said it was a bad year. Think about that for a second. I'm tired of this. It's ridiculous. The logic doesn't even make sense. Why are you willingly downgrading our talent? Uh, I don't want to get mad. I don't want to get mad because nothing's happened yet. And the fact that I'm even this riled up and fired up on the podcast is annoying me already. Uh, In more positive news. The Oilers and Jack Campbell and Tom Gazzola revealed his mask and pad setup for the year. The mask is just clean. It's got an Oilers logo on the side. It's got the blue and the orange, and it looks tight. It looks really nice. The artist, I wish I had his name, actually, did a really nice job on the mask. The pads, he's just going with a classic white uh, white blocker and glove and pads. Those are going to get bunged up with pucks eventually, but right now, in the moment, before the season starts, whoo, Jack Campbell looking real good. Looking real good. And since I'm talking about jerseys, why don't I add in that news broke late last week that the Oilers would not have an ad on their jerseys this year. Uh, A bunch of them came out earlier in the week. People were mad. I don't really get it. Did I talk about this last week? I don't remember. All the podcasts I do now just kind of blend together. So if I did, I apologize. Either way, no ads on the Oilers jerseys, and that has me excited. Just like... I'm excited about the boys being back in town, the captain standing in front of a microphone talking about hockey because Connor's back. He's on the ice with the boys. And when asked about expectations for the year, here's what he had to say. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's lots of, lots of expectations this year, uh, both outside and, and in the locker room. Um, you know, obviously, uh, last year was uh, a step forward, but we're going to come in here and, uh, and, and, and start all over again and um, you know, build on what... Uh, what we accomplished last year. So um, nothing's for free in this league. We certainly know that. So Nothing's for free, Connor. You got a lot of work to do, and last season was a lot of fun. How can we build on it? Also note the nose whistle from whoever was recording that audio. Did you guys hear the nose whistle? Listen back to that clip. Or maybe in this next one where Connor was asked about the boys being back in town a little bit earlier than normal, which had me very excited. The entire team is here early. What does that say about the commitment and trying to build from last year? Yeah, um, you know, it's great to see everybody. Um, you know, obviously, and 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 having having just a little bit of time just before the season, just to, to be out there with guy, with, you know, with the guys. And um, we saw today, you know, long scrimmage and, and just getting everyone up and going. Um, you know, camp is quick this year. Um, you know, so having everybody up and going right away is important. Starts are always important. We talk about it every single year. So. Um, I really emphasize the, the start of the season, and um, you can see uh, you see that commitment just with guys showing up. Guys showing up early to try and get in the mix. I love it. How excited are you out of ten for this weather season? How excited are you? How excited are you? It is the best. We are so so close. I can taste it. Lastly, in the news, we're going to wrap this up with well. 
arguably the least surprising news that I've heard in quite some time. A story over at cbc.ca today. Reports show concrete on Saddle Dome roof is crumbling. Bear with me as I read some of this article because you just need to wrap your mind around how big of a dump the Saddle Dome is and the fact that this is happening right before the NHL season starts is so on brand for that building considering how crappy it is. If you haven't been to the Saddle Dome... Community rinks in this city are better than what the NHL team is playing with down there. So bear with me. I'm going to read a bunch of this article because I just found it very entertaining. Engineering firm says that condition of the concrete around the ring beam is worsening at an accelerated rate. Part of the roof of Calgary Scotiabank Saddle Dome is falling apart, literally. Documents obtained by CBC News through Alberta's Freedom of Information legislation show that pieces of concrete have fallen loose from the roof's ring beam, while other crumbling pieces have been removed to prevent them from falling. Engineering firm Intuitive uh, intuitive recommended that there be inspections each spring and fall to monitor the deteriorating the deteriorating conditions of the concrete which have been caused by annual freeze thaw cycles in april 2021 a firm sent a letter to calgary sports and entertainment corporation which operates the publicly owned building advising that sections of loose concrete were removed but it also stated that the condition of the concrete around the ring beam is worsening at an accelerated rate earlier this year netting was installed around the ring beam to catch any pieces of concrete that appeared to be imminently ready to fall what what hold up wait a minute i continue Pictures in 2018 report show what happens when concrete breaks free and falls from the roof of the beam. Chunks of concrete fell onto a roof structure below, which is over the Saddle Dome's west steps. The heavy material punctured a jagged hole in the structure. The engineering reports note the problems with the concrete on the ring beams are of super uh, superficial nature and do not present a structural concern for the roof itself. <laughs> uh, that's reassuring, though, isn't it? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just the outside of the roof is falling. It's the outside. It's the, it's the part you see that's falling. But the structure, the meat and the bones of the roof, that's still good. Probably. Allegedly. <laughs> According to CBC, the city of Calgary refused requests for an interview on the subject. However, a senior official who is familiar with the reports and the Saddle Dome told CBC News that there are no concerns about the stability of the roof or for public safety. The official stand said a full remediation plan to stabilize the concrete is expected in the coming months and a plan to fix the problem will be implemented as the work plan has not yet been presented he said it is it isn't known how long the work will take to complete or how much it will cost so if you're wondering what's going on with the saddle dome it still sucks it's official you suck hold up wait a minute as if going down to the Saddle Dome isn't scarier enough. If you sat up at the press level, you know what I'm talking about. Hiking up there is an absolute trek. Nobody wants to do it. And now you got to worry about pieces of roof falling on your head? Come on. There we go. Wrapping up the news. We go to the phones. You're through to better late than never. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. The Reggie Sack Beating brought to you by Trilogy Oil Field Rentals. Check them out at TrilogyRentals.ca. They are an established provider of oil field rental tools with full-time operating units in Provost, Weyburn, and Kindersley. They also provide seasonal and project-specific stations at Fort St. John, Fort McMurray, Lac La Biche, and others as customers require. And, as we learned last week, fishing tools available through Trilogy Rentals. That's not good news. That's not for good news. That's not for good news. Your boy Bag Milk thought fishing tools meant you were going to have an enjoyable little Sunday afternoon. As it turns out, something went wrong. Something went wrong. So not only 
Does Trilogy Oilfield Rentals have the tools needed for whatever job you got coming up or on the go? They're also here to teach me how things work. And for that, I say thank you. For that, I say thank you. Touched on this a little bit earlier. The Jake for Tannen thing is 100% getting the righteous sack beating this week just because it doesn't make any sense. And more specifically, the situation is giving me anxiety and rage and anger at a time when I should feel be feeling none of this. Season hasn't started. I shouldn't be angry about shit. The only thing I should be upset about is that I, uh, you know what, I don't really have anything to be upset about right now. But this upsets me. And... I hate that I'm being sucked into the drama even though nothing yet has happened. Just the rumor annoys me. And for that, it drives me crazy that I'm falling into this pit because it's one of those things where people are getting rage clicks off me. I don't want it. This is the time, September 14th, baby. I'm supposed to be drinking the Kool-Aid. I'm supposed to be excited. I don't want to get pissed off about the Oilers. I love the Oilers. I love the way they're looking. I love everything about them. I love the way they're going to look in their new jerseys, but I don't want Jake Vertanen to wear one, and it makes me upset. And me being upset is the righteous sack beating of the week because nothing has happened. Nothing has happened at all. Nothing. And yet here I am complaining about something that may or may not happen. So I reached out to Frank Saravalli, insider from dailyfaceoff.com, NHL insider. You know who Frank Saravalli is. I talked to him today. I called him. I said, what's going on with this Jake Vertanen thing? I'm mad, and I don't know why I'm mad. Nothing's even happened. And he said he hadn't heard. Frank told me he hadn't heard anything was close, but that doesn't mean it's not true. So he was going to check into it. Watch Frank Saravalli. He will have some news on this. I was hoping he was going to text me before I recorded the podcast. He has yet to text me, so I imagine he's out there being scoop Saravalli. He'll find out. He says he hadn't heard it which makes me feel okay, but at the same time, I'm still angry. And the fact that I'm angry makes no sense. I hate it. I hate it. It's Kool-Aid season. This isn't the time to be angry. And yet there's so many of us that are big mad online over something that hasn't happened because the idea of it is stupid. If the trade comes through from that account that I told us all to ignore three weeks ago, the one that has no followers, I'm not even going to mention the name. If this is true, that yes, a gets traded to Anaheim for a condition for a second round pick in 2023 from Colorado, which would basically be a junk second round pick. Probably if that opens up the window for Jake for Tannen to sign, I don't understand it at all. I understand we have to make a cap move to sign Ryan McLeod. We all know that, but this right now, at this juncture, it's a downgrade to me. It's a downgrade in skill. It's a downgrade in skill. We're going into a season where expectations are sky high. You need more skill, not less skill. It's either that, like, uh, there's something I'm missing. There's something we're all missing. If this trade actually goes through and I have a legitimate reason to do an emergency podcast where I'm mad and I'm set and I'm rattled, that's a problem. How unpopular could Jesse uh, Yessa Pugliarvi possibly be within the organization to think this combination of moves is a good idea? Again, nothing's happened. But all of a sudden, it's starting to get more smoke from some random dude who no one had ever heard about before three weeks ago. Now start to pick up steam is upsetting me. And for that reason, I am the subject of this week's righteous sack beating for my friends at Trilogy Oilfield Rentals. You want to see a man, boy? I'll show you a man. Kick me in the jimmy. Again, go check them out at TrilogyRentals.ca. They got all the tools you need to get the job done. And I encourage you to go out and do that. TrilogyRentals.ca. I am Optimus Prime, and you're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bagged Milk, Autobots, Transform, and Roll Out. Man, I got to say, Captain Felton, that's a good impression. I really, really enjoy that one. I really do. Uh, before we get to the voicemail, I wanted to premiere something. So if you've been listening to the podcast for the last little bit, you've probably heard me go, podcast confessions. Well, I thought it'd be a good time to, or a good opportunity to have some fun with all of you and maybe get something off your chest. So I'm going to try the first run of podcast confessions this week. I'm just going to burn through these really quickly. I've got so many of them that you sent in. It didn't really work out the way I was wanting on this first time around. Some of you made confessions and I'm going to read those and we're going to have a good laugh about them together. Others, you just wanted me to confess more things. So it kind of turned into an ask me anything, which I'm fine with for this first time around. So let's get through some of these. We're going to burn through them real quick because I think this segment 
has some potential to turn into something. Again, if I'm going to go to two episodes a week, I need to keep you guys entertained and informed. So I'm workshopping some new segments to try and make that happen. If you got ideas, of course, hit me up, JSBM Bag Milk on Twitter. Hi, my name is Bag Milk on Instagram. First one up. Let's check it out. Did Kanye make all of Jay Z's hits? <laughs> it's like, I mean, that's not a confession. Number two, who is more dangerous to your bag milk empire, Dave or Craig? I don't understand the question. Who's the hottest nation employee and why? <laughs> that's one that gets me on a list. I can't answer that. Uh, Tyler Yemchuk is so fucking sexy. It says in the intro of this podcast. Uh, should I be honest with you on here? Yep, you should. That's where that ends. All right. What is your orientation? What is my orientation? I'm a straight dude. I'm a straight white dude. Uh, what was the best day so far this year? The best day so far of this year, 2022. Hmm. You know what? One of the days that I think about when I think of this year where I just had the most fun possible was when Jay Tyler and I flew down to Los Angeles for games three and four in the first round series against LA. Game three specifically, that was the one where the Oilers absolutely demolished the Kings. I took a beer to the head that night. I think of that whole day, how much fun we had, the night that followed the game when we were just, our spirits were sky high. So when I think of one of my best days of 2022 off the jump, um, that's going to be the one I go with. Here's a go. Uh, podcast confession. People who hate Kaylor Yamamoto because he's small probably don't like hockey. They just like violence. There's a fan of Kaylor Yamamoto. Do you have any piercings? Is this next question? And the answer is no. Although one time, podcast confession, when I was about uh, 12 or 13, young punk rocker, I did pierce my own ear with ice cubes and a potato. Obviously a pin as well. Uh, oh man, this is a weird confession. I quote, when I am super hyped to see a new mu uh, new movie, when I am super hyped to see a new movie, I will secretly go onto Wikipedia and read the entire plot of the movie. I just can't help myself. And then I act totally surprised in the theater when something unexpected happens. When Captain America picked up Thor's hammer, I had to be shocked. Why do you do that? I don't understand that move at all. Somebody else said that before. Are you the same person? Because I don't understand that move at all. It doesn't make any sense to me. I love being surprised by TV and movies. I love it. I love it so, so much. I don't understand you at all. Uh, next up. You ever think about having the ability to teleport? Yes. I mean, not often, but I am right now. If I could teleport to work and not have to be stuck in traffic, that'd be so, so nice. Would you ever get with me? is the next question. Uh, I don't know who you are, so I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. Next one, I love you. I love you too, random stranger. I don't know who you are, but I like it. Mm, where are we now? Where are we? I lost my place. I lost my place. Okay, here. I don't like cheese and Beyonce is overrated. Oh my God. I don't like cheese? How? How? Cheese is delicious, like all types. I mean, I get the Beyonce thing, but like cheese? Really? I got an interview for my dream job and I haven't told my parents because they hate the idea of me working there. Ooh, that's an interesting confession. What's the job? I'm dying to know. I'd love to know. I wish you could follow up with another anonymous confession for next week. Just kind of giving me a little hint. Let me tell you something though. I used to work at a major corporation, like a huge company before I started working at The Nation. So like before I was bag milk, I guess I was bag milk at the time, but like before I was bag milk, I was working at a big company. And when I told my parents that I was quitting to work for some weird startup company and I was going to call myself bag milk and I was going to be on the internet, they thought I was insane. They thought I was insane. So I did it. I stuck with it. It's worked out really, really well. I love my job. I love the people I work with. I love the opportunities I get as a result of this gig. And it was all because I took a leap of faith with the company about 10 years ago now. So my advice to you would be, I get the parents angle, but if it's something you love, it might be worth doing. It might be worth doing. Next confession. <laughs> I grew up in Calgary and wore Flames gear during the 2004 Cup run just so I could fit in and party with my high school friends. I've regretted it ever since. Don't give in to peer pressure, kids. That is a tough confession. I'm glad this is anonymous. I'm glad this is anonymous. I would have judged you. I remember the 2004 Cup run. I cheered against Calgary actively. Actively. 
Next up, I sometimes find it more attractive for women to cheer for rival teams like the Flames than the Oilers. Really? Interesting. Interesting. One more time. I sometimes find it more attractive for women to cheer for rival teams like the Flames and the Oilers. That's spicy. I don't know if I can get on board with that. I frequently get asked to leave my Oilers jersey on during sex. (laughs) Good for you. Good for you. Uh, Do you oblige? Follow up? I don't know. Leave me an, leave me a question. Uh, leave me a follow up. I'm going to post a bunch of these on my Instagram as well, just so you see what I'm looking at when they come in. So check my Instagram after the podcast gets posted. You'll see a bunch of these podcast confessions come up. Uh, personality, your looks. I don't think you can. I think for me personally, I, I think they're tied together very, very heavily. Personality goes into looks and attractiveness for me for sure. Um, I never liked having Ben Scrivens as the Oilers starter. Okay, backup in my mind. Is that a confession? I don't know if I buy that as a confession. I mean, I'll take it, but I don't know if I buy that. Uh, (laughs) I drunkenly urinated on the Calgary Saddle Dome after an Oilers win, and I secretly believe it's the best political statement I've ever met. Well, perhaps the acidity of your urine on the walls of the Saddle Dome is a big reason why the roof is collapsing. I suck at picking lives in his mom's basement. I hope you don't. Was that you, I Suck at Picking? Was that you? You just leave, you just want to shout out on the podcast? Go follow I Suck at Picking. Makes good shit. Forgive me, dear diary. It has been 56 days, 14 hours, 17 minutes, and 42 seconds since my last confession. I must shamefully confess to suffering addiction to collecting vintage Smurf figurines from the 80s and then posing them in obscene and bizarre ways. <laughs> If that's true, and I, I tend to not believe ones like this because it's just so specific. Um, if that's true, that's amazing. Let me see some of those Smurf photos. I want to see what kind of creepy shit you're up to. <laughs> uh, next up, I would stick blue gobstoppers up my nose. I did this every Halloween until I stuck too many up there and had to go get go to the hospital to get them removed by a doctor. <laughs> Ah, kids are so stupid, you know? I'm going to stick all these gobstoppers up my nose. That's a good idea. Did you have an imaginary friend? Uh, you know what? I asked my parents about this recently, actually. They don't remember me having an imaginary friend. They re- they told me they remember me talking to myself a lot. So did I have an imaginary friend? Not one that I remember. I still talk to myself a lot, so maybe I did, but I don't really know. One friend you're thankful for. Um, I got a lot of great buddies that I went to high school with that are still my friends now. Um, so none of them you would know, but one person that you would know. So I'll just say his name is Wanye. He's been a great friend and a mentor to me over the last 10 years. Every time he comes on the podcast, we kind of give each other over the pants handies and that's why. So he, I would, uh, I would absolutely, I would absolutely pick him. Uh, are you straight? Yes, I am covered that one. Uh, tell me a random fact. Tell me a random fact. Hmm. Both my feet are covered in tattoos. Both my feet are covered in tattoos. Uh, Teleporting, yeah, I think about it. Would you ever get with me? Yeah. Where am I now? Oh, here we go. Do you have any cute friends for me? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. What are you looking for? Hit me up. Slide into the DMs. I got some cute friends for you. Body count? You want me to reveal my body count on this podcast? Well, you're going to be disappointed to find out that I'm saving myself for marriage. I'm a virgin. I am pure of heart. Last podcast confession. What is your favorite hobby? Again, this kind of turned into an ask me anything, but that's okay. Um, One of my favorite hobbies legitimately is I love doing creative stuff. So if you look around my house right now, I've got instruments everywhere. I've got guitars. I've got... um, I've got just weird instruments. I've got a piano. I've got a bass guitar. I've got mandolin. I've got a ukulele. I like tinkering. I'm one of those people like I can pick up and I can kind of strum and I can have a good time. I'm not good at any of them. I wouldn't say that. That's not what I'm getting at, but I love tinkering. I love sitting down at my piano for an hour and just kind of fucking around. Or maybe I know how to play a song and I'll walk through it and then I'll start to tinker again a little bit. I love that stuff. I also love to doodle. Um, I have uh, sketchbooks at my house. 
a lot. And I just, I find it very relaxing to sit and doodle. I get stressed out sometimes. So a good way for me to occupy my brain is that, you know, I just check out uh, the sketch pad and I'll just put a couple of squiggles and see where they go. Let me see where they go. So this is the first time we're doing podcast confessions. A little bit weird first run, but we'll get there. So next week, I'm going to start loading up that link again on my social media. Please keep leaving those anonymous confessions. You can ask me anything if you want. We can just turn ask me anything into a segment if you want to do that. Like you could ask me about the business. You can ask me about my life. You can ask me about my career, whatever. But podcast confessions, I think is supposed to be, from my perspective, is just the things you want to get out there that maybe you're just a little bit too embarrassed to say. And I want to give you the platform to get it off your chest. So keep sliding those in. I'm going to keep reading them. I love them. So for those of you that did do the confessions the way that I was kind of planning, thank you. For those that just chimed in and asked me questions, thank you too. First run on a new podcast segment. You know, we're going to see how it goes. Caution. This podcast may contain traces of cheese and cherries. And with that, back to our regular programming. It is time for the voicemail. Got a whole bunch of voicemails today. Whole bunch of them. You guys have got thoughts. I imagine there's some of them that are going to answer the question of the week for this week. I imagine there's some of them that are going to be throwing back to past questions from last week. Or maybe you just want to chat. Maybe you just want to chat with your old pal Bag Milk. So that's what the voicemail is for. Please keep leaving me voicemails. And please keep thanking theaudiodepartment.ca for making this all possible. Though, I did speak to Jared in sales the other day. And we could have some potential new friends joining the show soon. Some new friends. And I'm very, very excited about it. First voicemail this week. Let's check in with Ronnie. You know those guys driving those... uh... They must have some kind of magna flow where they cut their catalytic fucking converters off. They're driving down the road and not cruising. Just every five seconds, just stepping on the accelerator just a little bit. Who the fuck are you trying to impress? Or do you just think it sounds that cool that you have to rev it every five fucking seconds? Yeah, that's just... It's just that's just annoying to you. I get it. Uh, I live out on the west end of the city, and lately on the weekends, it's been happening. Not every weekend uh, during the summer, but a lot of like Friday nights. There's like this little strip of road near me um, where people are drag racing essentially, and all I can hear at times is just the like the loud and it's just so fucking annoying to me. I don't even understand why anybody wants that shit on their car in the first place. The name is Bond. James Bond. And when I'm not shaving the world, I'm listening to Better Late Than Never. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bond. I appreciate that. Dan, what's up? Bag milk. This is my righteous sack beating Please. for the week. Hit me. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to be upset about this, but I listen to the Cult of Hockey podcast as well. And every time David Staples says Philip Broberg, he pronounces it as Philip Broberry. It's starting to frustrate me. <laughs> I don't. Is this true, Dan? Like David David Staples follows the Oilers. Like David Broberry. That can't just be a Freudian slip. He's got to be doing it on purpose, right? It can't, it's got to be like when I mispronounce words intentionally because I think it's funnier that way, right? Like when I say instead of Staples, I say Stoplays. I do it on purpose. Like, is he doing the same thing? I wonder. But Broberry. He doesn't exist. Because I don't know anyone else in the Oilers community that pronounces his name as Philip Broberry. It's either everyone else is pronouncing it wrong or just he's pronouncing it wrong. Mm -hmm. And it drives me up a bloody wall. I cannot get around how some of his comments are just so idiotic. And then he just can't even pronounce player names right. I only listen to this podcast for the other guy. I don't even know his name. But... God. It's Bruce. Bruce McCurdy. Bruce McCurdy's great. I love Bruce McCurdy. He he provides great content. Uh, no. David Staples is driving me mad. What a nut he is at this point. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Fucking David Staples just taking shots across the bow on a podcast he probably doesn't even know exists. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, David, if you're listening to this. It wasn't me. I didn't say it. 
Hey, Big Milk. What's up? Just wanted to say, mm-hmm. I realized just you now yeah. that the beat casts are almost back. Yes, they are. What is your plan this year for them? Are you going to continue eating beets or random assortments of items uh, from around the world? Um, I kind of want to just know what uh, what your plan is for the beat cast this year. Or maybe you're not doing the beat cast. Please don't tell us that because everybody wants it. If you shut it down, I'm going to be kind of upset. Good news. Good news, Bcast will be back. Of course the Bcast is coming back. This year, though, I don't know if I'm going to be eating beets after losses. Just the reality is the bit has kind of run its course. You know, it's just like the fun of me opening a can of beets and I hate them and pouring them into the bowl and scarfing them down at whatever time of night it is. It's just, it's annoying to me. And if I had to do that part of the Bcast again, I just wouldn't do it. I don't want to do it anymore. That was a sacrifice for 500 thing that we started years ago, and I just kind of carried it forward. But the good news is the Bcast is going to be called the Bcast, and we're still going to be doing it. I still will eat whatever you guys want me to, provided that I can find it and provided that it won't get me sick if you make a donation to the Edmonton Food Club or uh, Food Bank, I should say. So Bcast continues. I'm more than willing to eat weird shit for you guys again. You just got to make a donation to the Edmonton Food Bank and make it happen. That's it. Easy as that. Otherwise, I will be back every single night again, post-game, on Instagram, live, just as I've done for the last four or five years now. The Beats, they may or may not be there, depending on if the listeners and the viewers donate to the Food Bank. You could be like, Bag Milk, I donated 25 bucks to the Edmonton Food Bank. I want you to eat a can of beets because that's what I'm used to for the Beatcast. I would be happy to do that. Happy to do that. So Beatcast is coming back. It's just going to be a little bit different is all. Was it stupid of me to overcommit to Jack Campbell's jersey before he had even played a game for the... I don't know where the rest of this voicemail is going, but automatically I'm going to say no. And I'm going to tell you why. If ah, fucking butt bump and shit my knee, ouch. Uh, if people are giving you shit for getting a Jack Campbell jersey already before he's even played a game, I beg you, go watch his videos. Any of the videos on the Oilers social media of him speaking, the dude is such a sweetheart that I am calling, just like I did with Zach Hyman last year, by Halloween or Christmas at the latest, we are going to love this dude. So you are going to have a Jack Campbell jersey first and plenty, plenty, plenty of people are going to follow suit. Now to the rest of your message. Oilers, I don't know if anyone else has ever done this. I kind of just jumped off a cliff one day and was like, I need it. I saw it in the Oilers store window. I, I spent the extra money. I was like, I, I need this jersey. I'm going to be the first one on the bandwagon. I was at the gold medal Team Canada game for the World Juniors. Oh, that's perfect. Wearing that jersey, and people were giving me looks like, damn, he's drinking the Kool Aid way too early. No, you're not. No, you're not. Drinking the Kool Aid has to happen. Right now is the time when you enjoy that Kool Aid. Right now is the time when it goes down extra smooth. And you wear that Jack Campbell jersey. In fact, I say just hit the streets in that baby. Show him some support. He's driving around the town. Who knows? Maybe he sees you wearing his jersey and that gives him the extra boost he needs to start off the season like a house on fire. Next message. This is a solemn moment for Britain <laughs> and all of our Commonwealth. <laughs> Step forward, (laughs) King Donkey the First. (laughs) Uh, Yes, of course, uh, Queen Elizabeth passed away this week. Uh, My thoughts first go to Liam. He's out in England right now. Thoughts go to Liam and, of course, the donkey on uh, 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 on the devastating loss of Queen Elizabeth. And also, we don't get the uh, federal holiday on Monday. We get to acknowledge that it exists, but we don't get the day off, so... Uh, all hail King Donkey. You're listening to Better Late Than Never with Bat Milk. Better than listening to a giraffe giving birth. I don't know that's true. I say, you're thinking about a giraffe giving birth. <laughs> you dirty, dirty human. 
It's <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> uh, I can't say that this podcast is better than a giraffe giving birth. I can't say that. For, I can't say that with 100% certainty. I don't know what you're into, you fair listener, you. I'm just not going to confirm that. You're listening to Better Late Than Never <laughs> with Bags Milk. <laughs> I must say, your ears are rather enjoying this. Yes. Oh, I love a good. I love a good bumper from the donkey. Please keep sending me bumpers, by the way. I'm really, really enjoying them. I got to go through my bumper page. Now I've got, I'm going to guess 40 or 50 that I have now on this page. So I got to clean some of them up a little bit. But thank you guys so much for participating in this podcast. It means the world to me. It's the reason this thing grew through the summer. How stupid is that? This dumb shit. This podcast keeps growing week after week. There's really no reason for it. There's really no reason for it outside of we just have a good time together. And I hope you do too. Next message. Hey, Bag Milk, Presto again. Uh, up, just Presto? listening to The Nation and you guys talking about the Ring of Honor. I was walking, doing my workout, and you said exactly what I said right before you said it. It should be Doug Waite and Ryan Smith in the first one. I Those two are legit. Uh, sorry, I cut you off there, Presto. But Ryan Smith, Doug Waite, my two picks for the inaugural cra- class of the Ring of Honor. Who knows what they're going to do? Smitty's a lock, I imagine. I would be stunned if he's not there, my other pick. Doug, wait. Presto, back to you. Do think as a fan favorite, George LaRock should at least get a look at. But I think Horkoff is getting downplayed on a real bad stretch for the Oilers. Horkoff, Hemsky were, a, were, were something for the fans to cheer about. Yep. His all-star game, his 70-point season, I do think that Hork should get a look. Now, you guys talked about um, ads on jerseys and the English guy who I love on that podcast. He's Liam. awesome. But he talks about the legacy and the thing of soccer jerseys and how people don't even notice and they love it. But I think on the other side of that coin, the Euler jersey that I've loved since I was six years old, because it's not sullied by crap. It is a clean, crisp, wonderful jersey. The one thing I know about corporate people is the second they see they can make five bucks, it will end up like a Spangler Cup jersey because greed kills everything good. There should be no ads on jerseys in the NHL. This league makes money hand over fist so fast they can't even count it. There is no need to do this. I am a hard, hard no. And mark my words, Bag Milk, if they allow it to happen, within a decade, these jerseys are going to look like Spangler Cup crap. Keep up the good work. Ciao. Presto, passionate about jersey ads. I guess, like, right now, at this stage in 2021, where it's just the one little patch on the right side of the jersey and then the Adidas logo or soon-to-be Nike, allegedly, in my opinion, logo on the other side when they take over, allegedly, in my opinion, um, <clears throat> it just doesn't bother me yet. And maybe Presto's right that this is just, like, the gateway drug to Spangler Cup jerseys. Um Maybe that is true because one thing that he's 100% right about is if business owners can find out that they're going to make money from something, they're going to keep doing it and they're going to see if they could do more of it. So Presto probably is right. But here today on 2022, I just don't, I don't, I don't care all that much about it. It doesn't look that weird to me. I don't even notice it on TV. So difference of opinions there, difference of opinion there. And that's why I like this podcast. Presto's like, fuck those jerseys, fuck ads on jerseys. I love this jersey since I was a little kid. And that makes sense to me. So have I. Good news is, at least this year, we don't have to worry about it for the others. L-C-Y-E-G, what up? Bag milk. L-C-Y-E-G here. This is going to be controversial, and I'm sorry in advance for offending everyone. Uh-oh. But the thing that everyone else likes that I don't understand is pizza. What? Uh, I'm not a big bread person. Pizza, just, I don't know, like I'll order it because my kids like it, and I'll eat it because I'm hungry, but I'd rather have a taco or a pretty much anything else. Pizza just doesn't do it for me. Sorry, not sorry. (laughs) I think... I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Um... I don't know if I've ever heard somebody say they don't like pizza before. I'm stunned. I, I, I'm not normally speechless, but that has literally left me speechless. LCYEG, like, I love a taco too. Tacos are my favorite food on earth, but man, not liking pizza? Hmm. Not a big bread person. I wonder if you're into the cauliflower crust then, you know? <laughs> that is, man, I, I'm trying to have, I'm, I, 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 that, 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 I don't even know what to say. I have no idea what to say to that. LCYEG, you stumped me. 
What's a thing that people love that I just can't understand? Mine, I have two things. Hit me. First thing would be the show The Office. Um, I don't find it funny at all, and a lot of people love that show, but I think it's so boring. And another thing is, like, Chris... Well, well, well. How the turntables... Christmas <laughs> music. People love all kinds of Christmas music. I cannot stand Christmas music. I think all of it is like the same and it's so annoying. And when people start playing that, like the day after Halloween, it is so annoying. I don't listen to it. The only day I listen to it is Christmas because I'm kind of forced to because it's playing in the house. But yeah, that's things that I just don't understand why people love. That comes in from Nathan. Uh, the Office one is funny. I love The Office. For me, I had never watched an episode of The Office until the pandemic struck, and now I've seen the entire series through probably four or five times. I love The Office. It took a minute to get into it, but it's so stupid that it fits within myself, uh, my person, fuck, my sense of humor. <laughs> the Christmas music one makes me laugh because it's September right now, and I know exactly what you're saying. We're going to get past Halloween, maybe past Remembrance Day, maybe. And then all of a sudden, you're going to hear fucking Mariah Carey belting out the speakers all over shopping centers, all over the world. <laughs> it's so annoying. But I like some Christmas tunes. There are a couple of Christmas tunes I like, like Boney M Christmas. Come on. I'm getting down to that. Bad mouth, man. Yeah. This Lord of the Rings comment. Get out of here, Waz. Come on my podcast and take shots at me, Waz. Look, I get it. It's not for everybody. It's boring, Waz. The movies are incredibly long and they can get dull for some people. I understand. Whoa. He just said it. The movies are incredibly long and they can get dull for some people. Waz, you're proving my point here, pal. We've got 36 more seconds left on this voicemail, so I'm going to see where you're going. But so far, I see that you're on my side. Stamp, but man, those movies have such a sheer brilliance and beauty to them. They can teach you so many different aspects of <laughs> life. I mean, for me, it's got me through some dark days. I won't lie. There was a period. It, the only reason those got you through dark days was is because they're so fucking long that it literally got you through the day. That's the only thing I believe. Anyway, continue. Before I worked with the nation where I was really de- down in the dumps and I needed some motivation. So I watched Lord of the Rings. It was a great experience. And yeah, so... I can kind of get why you don't like them, but it's there, there's something so magical about them, in my opinion. They're beautiful. <laughs> However, the new series, I'm not going to talk about that. It's kind of disappointed me. It's been boring, but uh, this one hurts. This one hurts. Was what you're saying about the new series, you're saying it's boring. That's how I feel about the original ones. I think that you like them because they waste your time. That's what I've learned from that message, Waz. I love you to the moon, pal. But I think that your love of Lord of the Rings has more to do with the fact that you can pass nine or ten hours watching that bullshit than it does that you actually enjoy the movie. Huh. But to answer your questions, something I don't understand that a lot of people do like is Taylor Swift. I mean, she's got a few good <laughs> jams, I won't lie, some good radio hits, but overall, I don't understand the hype. It's incredibly high. Uh, if I speak too much, I will be in big trouble because on that car ride to Lloyd Minister and back to Edmonton, I I listened to probably four hours worth of Taylor Swift because of Kennedy and Kylie. They love Taylor Swift. I don't understand it. I, I don't. I don't. I get it. She went through a couple of heartbreaks. We all do. <laughs> That's life. You don't have to make a song and album for every goddamn heartbreak. Where... I'm going to disagree, Waz. She goes, she sells millions and millions of albums talking about those heartbreaks. So I've got an alternate theory where Taylor Swift is just dating and breaking up with people, allegedly, in my opinion, because she knows she's going to get some bangers out of it. You know, that's my theory. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm saying too much. I'm I'm going to get slammed here by a few ladies. Uh so yeah, Taylor Swift don't get it. and like they have like parties <laughs> at the Starlight Room dedicated to Taylor Swift. It's only Taylor Swift, and people dress up like her. They, I mean, okay, I'm saying way too much. I'm so sorry. Was you can uh, reach out to him at Matthew W at OilersNation dot com. That's his email. Remember, Was first name is Matthew. Or you could just hit him up on social saying it's Was. I am not going to say a thing about Swifties because (laughs) they are a gang, allegedly, in my opinion, and I'm scared of them. I'm going to take it a little different. Instead of being it's something that people like but I don't understand, 
It's going to be something I like that people don't understand. Craft dinner and Ichiban mixed together. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Craft dinner and Ichiban mixed together? Let me think about this. I need to know. I, I, I can't even wrap my head around what you're doing here. Is this Bryson, my cousin? Is this my cousin leaving me this voicemail? Because if this is you, I've got questions. I've got questions for your father and your mother about how you were raised. Uh, I'm confused about what's going on in that household of yours. Provided that this is my cousin after all. Sauces and all. Put that together. Oh, Sauces and all? It's amazing. Nobody, nobody believes me, but I'm telling you, if you try it, your mind will be changed. Also, keep up the good work. Love the podcast. I'm going to check in. I'm pretty sure that's my cousin. And I need to check in on how he's being raised because I feel like I have to, I feel like I have to involve myself. Craft dinner and itchy ban. I'll try it. I'll try it, but I don't get it. Maybe I, maybe I'll be converted. I don't know. Hey, bag milk. Long up? time listener. First time voicemailer. Thank you. Gotta say one thing that people love that I can't stand is karaoke. <laughs> I tell you, every single time people at the office want to go out for drinks, for some reason it has to be karaoke. And they always assure me, like, you know, you don't got to sing, you don't got to sing. I'm like, yeah, you're damn right I don't have to sing because my mother raised me to know that I don't got to do anything I don't want to do. Mm -hmm. But that's not even the point. It's not even that I wouldn't get up on stage and make an ass of myself. I do that all the time. No problem. It's that I have to sit there in the audience and listen to person after person think that they can sing, I don't know, My Heart Will Go On better than Celine Dion. But the screeching and oh. the squawking and the drunken <laughs> idiots that just get on that stage. I would rather go to the dentist than sit in the audience of a karaoke bar for an hour. <laughs> I, I don't get why people... Oh get pleasure from that and I, I no no thanks that's so fucking funny to me i've been to karaoke bars i don't know how many times in my life i've been to a karaoke bar but like it's a lot and i've been, i've been up there singing and i've been up there in the audience and i i mean i can't even disagree because like sometimes people go up and they sing and you're just like you should not make any noises from your face at all like in fact i would recommend that you stitch that baby up and not even speak anymore because your singing voice is offensive uh that happens a lot but oh man that voicemail is very funny very very funny i didn't think about that karaoke there's just people that love 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 karaoke and they go every time they're hammered they want to go sing a tune but you know what I'll, I'll do it too if i'm drunk enough and you say bag milk you want to come to karaoke you know what i'm doing one direction you don't know you're beautiful that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna hit you with it and it's gonna sound like shit but i'm gonna do it oh man that's a very funny voicemail mr bag milk yeah. what is the thing that a lot of other people got into that i just could not get into myself yep well, I got you. And I'm going to apologize in advance because I'm going to piss off a lot of people here. Excellent. So I am sorry. And I'm sorry to you, Bag Milk, because I listen to your stuff because I like you. And I know you like this. So I am sorry. <laughs> please don't block me from sending in voicemails. <laughs> anyway, rap music, hip hop music, pop music, it's all garbage. <laughs> I don't understand the hype around it. It's so so bad i don't understand how anyone with a functioning brain and functioning hearing could sit down and listen to a drake song and think oh yeah this is good music this guy has so much talent and he puts so much effort in it is garbage if i wanted to shove shit in my ears i would go somewhere and find some deer droppings and shove them in my ears like that and i wouldn't listen to that garbage <laughs> The vast majority of it is, is garbage. I do have some time for some select Kanye West songs and some old Eminem, like we're some shady, that kind of thing. But the vast majority of rap music is garbage. And I like 80s rock, so you know what? Just take shots at me. <laughs> Anyways, sorry for pissing you guys off, but rap music is garbage. It is garbage. Anyways, thanks, Big Milk. Sign Ryan McLeod. <sighs> Nick, Nick, Nick. I like you, pal, but that's a tough take. Hip hop, you don't like any? Like, you said, you said a couple of Kanye and Eminem tunes. Like, Kanye's got so many bangers, 
Eminem's got a bunch of tunes too, but like Drake's got good tunes. The baby's got good tunes. Like Wheezy, all of it. You don't like it? I'm not going to make fun of you for eighties rock music though. I also love eighties rock music. Did you go to the poison Motley crew, uh, Def Leppard concert? I would have loved to go if I was around. I love that shit. I love it. Here's the thing about me and my musical taste. It's so varied that people think that I'm actually lying sometimes because I like so much different random music. I've talked about it a bunch of times on the podcast. I grew up listening to punk rock. That's like my default. It was punk rock and hip hop. That was when I was in high school. That's all I listened to is punk rock and hip hop, punk rock and hip hop. Got older, classic rock. And then some of the more like experimental stuff, like I've listened to the talking heads and I'd listen to Devo and I would listen to, um, the people that sing your own personal Jesus. Like I would just, I got into different stuff and the cure and older than that. Like I love the Beatles is one of my favorite bands. And that's from my parents listening to the Beatles a lot. Led Zeppelin's one of my favorite bands. And that was again, exploring classic rock when I got out of high school. So I'm not going to make fun of you, Nick. I'm just going to tell you to be better. Last voicemail of the week. Hey, Beg Milk. It's Taylor. A uh, long time. No talk. Taylor, where have you been? I've been worried about you. I played your Let's Go Baby button all over the place over the last couple of weeks, and you've been nowhere to be found. Taylor from Sonic, where are you? I'm still here. Still listening. I want to talk about the things that people love, but you don't seem to get. I'm 100% with you on Lord of the Rings. It's just a bunch of short, hairy dudes going for a hike. <laughs> if, if, if you live in a land of magic, just conjure up a helicopter. Drop that ring in the volcano. Boom. Movie yeah, over. Movie done. Maybe 20 minutes. Done. <laughs> movie done. You know what? This is the land of magic. It's just like, blink, helicopter. You fly up the mountain, ring in the pit, call it a day. Lord of the Rings, that's not a 10-hour series. No, no, no. We wrap that baby up in a 15-minute tight little video like it's some kind of short on adult swim back to you taylor uh the thing i don't like that everyone seems to love can, can, is this a safe place it is reese's peanut butter cups oh my god that fake peanut butter goop <laughs> in the middle Ugh. taylor just throws me off i love real peanut butter real peanut butter with chocolate so good but can't do reese's i'm a weirdo i need to get you on this podcast taylor first of all that voice how smooth is that how smooth is that voice from Taylor at Sonic? I need to get you on this podcast. First of all, yell at you about Reese Peanut Butter Cups. And second, just because I think it'd be fun. Um, Reese Peanut Butter Cups, I love them. I don't even know what to say. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed in so many of you. <laughs> but that's the whole point of it. I love it. Thank you guys for joining in on this once again. And that's how we wrap up for another week, the voicemail. <laughs> Uh, you guys are the best. This is just a fun podcast for me to do. I get to sit and I get to bullshit. I get to take your voicemails. I get to take your thoughts, your righteous sack beatings, your dreams, your answers to my question of the week. And I got to wrap it up in a tasty little podcast. Soon to be two episodes a week, I think. Probably. I think that's the plan. That's what I want to do. We'll see if I actually do it. I'm going to commit to it, I think, because I've got some sponsors, some potential, some new friends coming on the podcast that they want me to do two a week. So if that's the case, well, sometimes you got to do it. Sometimes you got to do it. For the audio department.ca and Trilogy Oilfield Rentals, I just want to say thank you to all of you for being here and participating. Even if you upset me with the question of the week of what you like that other people don't or what other people like that you don't or your confessions, Keep sending those in. If you want me to do and ask me anything, I would be happy to do that on this podcast as well, where you can just ask me whatever you want and I will answer. We can also do that. But for the confessions, let's do it one way. If you want to do and ask me anything, that could just be another kind of segment where you can ask me about whatever. We'll get there though. This podcast evolves and it's all because of your participation. And for that, I say thank you. Tie -tie. Why won't you kiss me?